Hi there. Hey, if you want to know how to do a home valuation report on KB Court, you're in the right place. Uh, we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Mike Cerrone with Rams Agents Coaching Call, and our goal is to help our agents add two referral closings per month to their current production by implementing the Referral Agent Mastery System into their practice and leveraging RAMS marketing and EXP tools such as KB Core CRM and EXP Marketing Center. My name is Mike Cerrone. I'm a co-founder of RAMS Agents at EXP Realty, and my co-host is Angela Newman, a master trainer of RAMS Agents at EXP Realty. Hello, Angela. How are you doing today? Good morning. Happy Wednesday, Mike. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, and Patty. Angela. <laughs> yes. Uh, Good to see your smiling face. This is going to be a good call today. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, so I appreciate you being here. Let's do this. Let's open up. Does anybody have any good news they'd like to share with the group? Well, um, we will be speaking later today. You'll, you're will you going to host a, a webinar for some of our people that um, are interested in learning more about options for that upcoming NAR uh, settlement that's um, in place coming up. So um, that's exciting. Um, and just working along, staying busy. We've got lots of um, activity. I think you can definitely tell that spring is Spring is here. Spring is a popping. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to be doing that uh, call later today. Um, and we're going to be talking about the NAR proposed settlement and uh, how it could affect you working with a buyer and also how it could affect you working with a seller. And uh, an opportunity that I see in each of those and how I think it's going to play out. Uh, just kind of maybe a, a little bit of a bright spot uh, on something that's been a, a little bit of a, a challenge for most of us to try to figure out how to handle. I think we're all going to push through it just fine. And uh, I'll show you what I mean by that when we get into that call. That'll be later today. Uh, and that'll be two o'clock central time. All right. So let's do this. Let's uh, jump into our training for today. And I'm going to share my screen in just a second. Let me get things set up for us and make sure that you can see it. Where? Oh. <laughs> Got to be faster at this at some point. And there you go. You should be seeing my screen right now. All right, cool. All right, so what we've got here is we're inside of KV Core. And um, just kind of waiting for things to play out there so they don't get on our recording. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just show you if we're at the beginning of KV Core, how we get there. So again, what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to add a home valuation report to a to a contact. This is for a homeowner. And what we're going to do is this is where you land on the dashboard. You're going to go over into contacts, open up contacts, and we're going to go find uh, our person. I'm going to click my sphere search over on the left. There we go. And it's going to pull up my options. And I'm going to go down to this uh, lady named Jane. This is uh, one of our fictitious people, and we're going to set one up for Jane. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I've got an address for Jane that I made sure was a true address because I gave her a fictitious address and it won't work with that. All right. So what we've got here with Jane is this is what you see in her contact record when you first get in all of her details. And if you go over to the far right, the third column starts off with the word actions and we start rolling down. And we're going to look for um, this one right here called listing valuation. So let me highlight that listing valuation. And again, it's even though it says listing valuation, they're not listed. You, you can send this out to someone who hasn't listed their home, but that's what they call it in this program. So we're going to go ahead and click the word add. And what's going to happen is it's going to say, hey, where would you what address would you like us to evaluate for the uh, the value? Uh, the estimated value or worth of this property. And we go ahead and we're going to uh, put in the address. You're going to type in, I'm going to copy and paste. Let's see, copy and there we go, paste. And what it does is it pops up a couple different options and says, hey, these are in our database. Is this one of them that you want? And I'm going to click, yeah, I want this one right here. 
And if it happened to be a condo or townhome with a unit number, we would add that. Uh, this one is a house. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And when I did that, it down here said, hey, listing valuation successfully added on the left. And then over here on the right, you can notice that it says on the far right here, listing valuation. And it gives a, an amount, uh, 1.2 million, and it gives the property address. And that way you can confirm that the correct property address went in. And what's going to happen is it's going to sit there for 24 hours and it'll go out tomorrow. The reason they do that is in case you put in the wrong address or you did something incorrectly. At this point, you could just uh, click this little uh, X and it will uh, delete it. And you can start over if you notice that you put in the wrong address. Uh, it also says, hey, update and send. You could actually just update it and send it right now or in the future. So that's what's going on there. So let me just go on a little bit further about what's going to happen at this point. So we've now put in this address. We've got this contact Jane, and this is going to email out to her tomorrow, a little email that says, hey, uh, we've got a home valuation for you over here. If you want to know the value of your home, just click this link. And if they click that link, they're going to go over to our website, the back, the, the front end, the public facing end of KV Core. And they're going to go to our website and they're going to see a bunch of um, information. But what they first see is just a statement that says, hey, if you want to get a home valuation on your home, click confirmation here. If they click confirmation, it's going to show them the value of their property that's estimated for them, plus all kinds of other details. If they don't click that button, then nothing's going to happen moving forward. Let me go back to if they click the button. If they click the button, they're going to immediately see a valuation. Plus, every 30 days, they're going to receive an update of the value of their home, which is pretty cool. Uh, however, if they do, if they decline, if they don't accept that, they don't click on the email to go over it, and they don't click and say, yeah, I want this thing, then everything stops because of all the can spam laws and everything else. We're not going to send anything out to them unless you initiate it again to request, hey, do you want to get a home valuation? So it's not going to be automatic until they confirm that they actually want it. Okay, and that's what this button right here is, which is update and send again. So if you send it out to your people and they don't accept, then just wait 30 days or whatever time you want to wait. I recommend at least 30 days. And then you just come back in here and you click it again and it'll send it out the request. Maybe the first time they were busy, the second time they go, yeah, oh yeah, I do want that. And they click it. And then again, it's going to send them this automatic valuation of their home. So that's what's going on there. I just want to show that to you really quick, how fast it is to set that up for people. So let me close this out, see everybody's smiling faces again. What do you think about that? So when you say that you can edit it, what kind of things can you edit? Um, sure. So with the valuation. When I, I know if I said edit, but let me just say that if you put in the wrong address, let me let me go back in there again and show that. Uh, <laughs> give me a second. There we go. There we go. All right. So we're on the screen again. And over here on the right, uh, where it's at, if we had put in the wrong address, you can see there's a little pencil mark there. Let's go ahead and click that and see what happens. Okay. So it's going to say, hey, did you type? Here's the address you currently put in. Do you need to put in a different address? Did we have that wrong? Uh, and for instance, let's go ahead and just try it. And let's say that I had 52 and instead I want to do 53. Okay. And I'm let's let's see what happens if I enter 53 instead is in the address. So now 52 is what was currently there and 53 is what I just put in. I haven't done this before. Let's find out. So I'm going to click save and see what happens. <clears throat> Okay, it updated it. It changed it to 53. Let me go ahead and click this open and confirm that. Yeah, so now currently it's 53. So when I, if I said edit, maybe I did, uh, I meant the address. All you, can, all you can change is the address. So here's the other thing you can do. Let's say you put it in there, it was completely wrong. You don't wanna do it, or maybe you don't wanna send out this, you just decided I don't wanna send them a listing valuation. You can click this button down here, this uh, little black uh, 
uh, circle with the red, uh, white X in it. And if we click on that, it's going to say, hey, are you sure that you want to remove this listing valuation report? And I'm going to click yes, just to show you that it'll disappear. And notice it went away, completely gone. Nothing's going to be emailed out or sent to them. So you can do that at the beginning. You can even do that after they've been receiving it. Just remember, if you do that, then uh, they're going to have to reconfirm that they want it again. So let me show you how we added that. We'll do that one more time. We'll go ahead and click add. And we'll go back to our original address just because it's in my, uh, my little uh, copy and paste. And so there's our uh, original address. And we'll say, yep, that looks good. And I click save. And now it's in there. And it, again, it gives us the idea of the valuation. Just remember, when you put that in the first time, it's not going to email it out today. It's going to wait 24 hours to make sure you didn't have any errors. It's just kind of what the system does. You can force send it right now by clicking update and send. It'll send it right now. Beware, don't do that unless you really double checked and made sure the address is correct. So Angela, did I answer your question? Yes, yes, yes. And so would you recommend then, because we, we have everybody enter themselves as a contact into the system, would you recommend that they test it on themselves? First. I think that's a fantastic idea. That's a great point. Uh, Angela, you get a double star today. <laughs> that was really good. So uh, yes, please put yourself in and your own address and send it out so you can see the report. Make sure you are happy with the report. You may decide you do or don't want to do this. For instance, I did this on my property and the valuation came in really high. <laughs> I don't know why, but it was much more than the actual value of my home by quite a bit, by um, almost 30 some percent. And, um, and so you may not wanna do this report. Now, other areas that may be more accurate, you might wanna check your area and make sure that it's not coming out really high or really low or something that you think would be off. But if it's coming in pretty close to what you think is right, uh, I think it'd be a good idea. Plus, you can see the actual email they're, they're showing. I, I don't have it set up, and I apologize to show you that email today. Uh, but maybe in a future call, I'll show you what the email is on their side. Or you could just go ahead and test it out on yourself. That's a good point. Angela, do you have any other uh, points you'd like to make? No, that was that was all that I had for now. Patty, did you have anything? I was just curious if you can have the report sent to, like, can I have the report sent to me at the same time? Oh, good question. Can you CC yourself on this? Uh, and I don't think you can for the listing valuation. It's a great okay. question. You can when you send out uh, properties, um, like a, a list of properties for a buyer. Excuse me. I know you can put yourself CC on that. I know you can do it when you do a listing notification, like a neighborhood notification that your neighbor's home just went for sale. No, you can CC that. This one, I don't believe you can get a CC on. I didn't see any option there and I don't remember seeing one. Angela, have you seen anything on that? I have not. I haven't um, actually, I, I have tested this before, but I don't recall if you can CC. And um, another thought I had is I wonder if it will, put into like the notes section or the history section that the valuation went out and maybe you get a copy there, but um, yeah, something we can look into for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to play with it too, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. It does, uh, let me just show people that. <laughs> Hold on, Let's see. And we're back in. Cool. All right. I have to do that because it's not showing our faces on this screen. I can set it up that way, but then it messes up the recording. Um, so I'm in the middle here. It is documenting everything that we do to this client, uh, all the actions we take for the client. And uh, I think it does show that you sent it out, but it's not going to notify you unless you look in here as far as the listing valuation. Uh, that specifically that listing valuation. As I said, up here, just to, 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 to fill out the statement, if you do a searching alert, okay, like a home alert, 
and let's go over there. Let's just do this here. Boom. Like here, we've got these properties that we're sending out to this uh, particular person and uh, they, they are getting information. On this one, we can set it up so that we get CC. And I think I can do it right here. Yeah, so like right here, uh, we're sending out the starter home list to these folks. And right down here, it says, hey, uh, do you wanna send out a carbon copy to someone? And I set myself up to receive that in this example, uh, because I was sending this out to a, a renter that was in my PCSOI. And I was telling them about starter homes and we set this up to go out monthly. Uh, so that we get the list. And then I did receive that list. And I think we talked about that on another call. We can make a follow-up call. It's it's optional, but you can make a follow-up call and say, hey, did you see that list I sent over to you? What do you think? And uh, so that's kind of cool. And you can also, again, set this up on this. This is for a, buy, uh, for a renter who might buy. You can also do it for a homeowner who might sell. And uh, and the same thing, you can set yourself up on the carbon copy and, and uh and help out that way. Did that help? Did that, did that give a little more clarification? Yes, yes. And I'll get in there and um, and look around with this. I, I like the idea, or I like the fact that we can do this right out of KV Core. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's all in there, and uh, perfect. It's really a matter of kind of playing around with it. Angela made a great point that we should test it out. Right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. you. What's coming? So be sure to just put yourself in KV Core. Have, it just takes a couple minutes uh, to add yourself as a, a contact and then set yourself up with all these things that we're doing. So um, uh, your notification for your neighbor's home going on the market, a notification if you are a renter to receive what the rental properties in there are in the area so you can see what they would be getting. Uh, I actually get these notifications. I've set myself up on this stuff. So I'm getting notifications every couple days of, hey, and I'm like, what was, oh, okay. Yeah, I set myself up for that. I forgot. And uh, home valuation for yourself. Um, uh, you can do uh, just a regular search, like you were working with an active buyer. If, the, if you, or, you know, they're not like right in the market yet, but they're kind of on the cusp. Maybe they're 60 days out or 90 days out. They're trying to notify them once a week. You can set one of those up, kind of a drip for them of what's coming into the market. Uh, it, so it has all that capability in it. And the nice thing is it kind of, as you just pointed out, Patty, it keeps everything in one place. So we can make a quick reference. You certainly could do this in your MLS or maybe another service, but then you're bouncing around to a bunch of different places. And so if, if at all possible, I do recommend you try to keep it in the CRM as long as what you're sending out is at least 80, 90% of what you want. You're never gonna get 100%. <laughs> Good. Any other thoughts on the, um, the home valuation uh, idea? Uh, and this program inside of KV Core. Any other questions or thoughts on it? Well, I, I think that once that gets sent out, that gives you an opportunity to follow up with um, with your your people and and let them know too that those home valuations are going to be based on a lot of different factors, but in reality, it'll be based off of condition and um, current market activity and things like that. So, um, but it's fun. It's fun to look at, fun to kind of see it as, as it goes up and down or hopefully up, but <laughs> um, yeah, but definitely a good opportunity to call people and talk about it, so. Exactly, remember that is our, our goal in everything we do at Rams is to get in the conversation with people, right? Um, First of all, it's fun, <laughs> just for most of us in our personalities. These are people we like, so it, it's fun to call them up and start chatting. So that's number one. Uh, number two, though, from the business side, it's kind of fun because we're mixing business with pleasure in this, this world of PCSOI. And so on the business side, uh, we have to stay in front of our people, right? Because we don't know what day they're going to wake up and go, mm, I got to move. <laughs> and we want to be around. We want to be in their world and be on top of mind when that happens. So uh, giving them a call out and a reach out in any of these opportunities, you, what you need to be thinking of, it's, it's a connection. Uh, we did a, an interview for Mastermind Agent, one of my favorites on this topic, 
uh, with a kid named a kid. Everybody's a kid to me if they're younger than me. So <laughs> this guy's in his 20s, early 30s. Uh, he's a man, but to me, he's a kid. Everybody, um, I apologize, but that's what it looks like to me in my now perspective. But anyway, uh, Caleb, he's a great kid, a great man, and uh, uh, a great real estate agent. Let's do that. And so uh, Caleb uh, had been in the business for a few years, and he tripled his business in one year. And the number one thing that he did, and by the way, when he tripled, his GCI went to 900,000. So, I mean, he was at a great level already and he tripled. Anybody would want to do that, right? And the thing that he did, all he did was he started tracking how many conversations he had per day, okay? And he, he actually tracked it. He added in a spreadsheet. And if you go back and you watch that call, he actually shows us the spreadsheet and he shows us how... He started tracking how many conversations he had today. That's all he did. Just how many times he talked to people and it went up. And when that tripled, his business tripled. <laughs> it's such a simple thing. You know, we try to make the business so complicated. Uh, but that's anytime we have this opportunity to reach out, we have to take that. Um, and uh, along with that concept now, you, uh, for instance, Blake, who's not with us today, he called his people first and said, hey, I'm going to send you a report. Could you give me feedback on whether you like it or not? I thought that was pretty smart because, again, it's just another conversation. And then he got the feedback from people, whether they liked it or not. Most did. And he said, well, great. Well, we'll keep it going. If they didn't, he said, well, we'll not send it to you anymore. That's easy. I can click this button and it won't go out anymore. I thought that was really smart to tie the two together. So that's another idea. Me, I'm crazy. I would just send it all out to everybody and wait for feedback. Uh, you may be of the type of personality, though. You're like, no, I want to get confirmation first that I want to, um, then they want to receive it. Either option is great, is going to work for you. Uh, just make sure you're doing it through a system where they have the option to opt out. Okay. First of all, you have a relationship with them. Second, they have the option to opt out. And that's what's inside of KV Corp. It's going to ask you, did you have permission to send this to them or not? And, uh, and, and so forth. You get the idea. Good. Other, other thoughts on what we just talked about? We can open this up to any questions you have on anything we presented so far or any, anything you need help with to get more repeating referrals. Anybody have any questions, comments, issues, or concerns that we can help you with? Let's open it up for some general coaching. Well, and Mike, we had talked about last week um, inventory and a short of, shortage of inventory and ways that we can um, maybe look for other options that aren't actually active on the MLS. And um, so one of those ways was to go back to expireds that were maybe a buyer's, an active buyer that you are working with criteria and then reach out to those owners. Um, and another option is just to uh, do circle prospecting in that neighborhood or whatever the area is that the buyer is interested in. And so, um, so just to, I'm still working on that. I haven't um, actually found anything yet, but it is. I think it's an interesting option, um, both uh for our our buyer that we're working with but then also the potential to maybe get a listing or reach out to somebody that might be interested in selling so it's a great point it's a great idea um angela yeah. and i were brainstorming on a prior call and it was a lot of fun uh because the whole concept here is you have a buyer need okay that's what's driving this you're working with a buyer and they can't find what they're looking for. In this case, because it's a thin market, it could even be there's a lot on the market, but they're not finding specifically what they're looking for. This is really awesome because it goes back to what we have in our title, or maybe it depends on the state, but a true broker or a true salesperson, a true associate, depending on, again, the title in your state, but the whole idea of you're bringing a buyer and a seller together, 
right? Because that's what most people think that we do. And we do, but we usually do now through cooperation with a lot of agents. The networking of agents works really well to make that happen. But in the old days, if you go back to the 1950s and before, they literally had you worked with a buyer and then you had to go find the seller or you had a seller and you had to personally go find a buyer. And so it's going back in time to that concept and it can work really well for you. So if you have a a true buyer with a true need, a true drive, and they're, they want to buy something in a specific area, a certain price, and it's not there, it's a great opportunity to reach out to people who might want to sell and ask them, hey, have you thought about selling? I got this buyer over here. And the more details you can give about the buyer, the more real it is to the seller, and you'll find out if they have a true interest in selling their property, you might be able to make a match. And as Angela said, you may be able to pull out more listings out of there. So that's the idea. How do you do it? Uh, Angela mentioned a great idea. You can go to expired listings or for sell by owners. They've already raised their hand and said they want to sell. But these are off market. When we say off market, they're off market as in they're not on the MLS. Okay. And so we got, we're got we able to go search for them outside of what other agents may typically do. And uh, so looking at the expired list, looking at the FISBO list, maybe looking at the withdrawn list, maybe looking at some old lists of people who had raised their hand in the past is great. And then the other option is just look at people who have never raised their hand or haven't raised their hand a long time. They're just living in a neighborhood, but that's a neighborhood that your people want to move into. And then you contact or reach out to them to ask them if they want to sell. And you can do that by mail. You can do it by phone call. You can do it by door knocking. Uh, maybe you can figure out a, an email list uh, or a text message. In the old days of Facebook, you could do it by zip code or even subdivision, but they've gotten rid of a lot of those real narrow uh, features, which were nice. Um, but you, you, you used your brain to start thinking, how can I narrow in on this? I mean, you can even do like, you know, I'm just being very creative right now. You could do a, a video on YouTube that calls out the specific neighborhood. Hey, do you have a home in Elk Ridge? And you say in, in your city, in your state, and it's possible that someone types that in their computer or sees it and forwards it to a friend. You can do it out on social media to try to get people to network around it. Same idea. Um, so having the buyer, true buyer that has a true need is very powerful. Just remember, if you're going to do that, you got to be as you want to be as specific about the buyer and their need as possible without it, uh, having any problems with revealing who they are. So you're going to have to ask their permission to use their name, for instance. So you can but you can use a lot of the details about them. So uh, they're looking for this kind of property in this price range. They're looking for up to 500 uh, in my area. They're looking up for 500,000. They're looking for a three bedroom, two bath, and they want two car garage and they want a basement. That's just the typical want in my area. And they and they wanted it, but they wanted it in this area, this particular neighborhood. Uh, I said Elk Ridge or uh, Green Mountain Village, or they, they want some certain thing uh, in a certain place. And you put in those details and uh, and that's what makes it real to a homeowner who says, oh my gosh, that matches me. I'm going to call up Angela and say, hey, I, I'm thinking about selling. I don't want to put it on the market. I don't want all the frustration of having people running in and out of my house. Maybe you have one buyer who would come by and just look at it real quick. And this, this could be really easy for me to move and sell my house and go down to Florida and help my mom and dad or whatever their situation is. Does that make sense? Yes, and, and I think that that was um, brilliant a brilliant recommendation that you made to me was to be very specific. I'm working with two buyers and, and this buyer can go up to this price. This buyer can go up to this price. Um, they're looking for this and uh, and then it does. It makes, it's because we don't want to be just saying that and not really have a buyer you know we want to be honest and ethical and um, the more information that you can give about that particular situation the more relaxed and and uh believable it is to you know the people that you're contacting exactly and the easier it is for you to talk about it because it's real <laughs> exactly right <laughs> uh, 
there are uh, trainers, gurus, whatever out there who say, hey, you know, just make it up. You know, just make up a fictitious buyer and send it out because they know the power of this. It is power. And um, the, I've always had a problem with that because you don't actually have a buyer. <laughs> you're, you're, you're lying. <laughs> How hard is it to find a buyer? I mean, you can find buyers are everywhere. So you can actually find a real buyer. And if you don't have a buyer, go ask uh, one of your agent friends. Hey, are you working with any buyers? Yeah, I'm working with three. Good. Tell me what they're looking for. <laughs> okay, I like C. Let's use C. Uh, and then you could use that. You could say, hey, I'm looking for my friend. I'm looking for my agent friend who's got a buyer who wants to buy in this neighborhood. Do you have any? That's legit, right? Because you're actually looking for somebody with a specific need. And you can get into those details. So keep that in mind. If you get into this situation, you like the concept, you aren't, you aren't working with a buyer right now for whatever reason, no problem. Go ahead and ask somebody in your office, uh, ask somebody on your team, ask somebody that you've met at the association meetings, right? Do you have any buyers? They're going to have buyers. And then pick one, or you could even give, <laughs> you have 10 buyers, great. I'm looking in this area that, you know, I think I want to get listings over there. Do you have any buyers in this area? Oh yeah, I do. And then you make a match that way, right? So that's the match through the co-op. Um, I gave you one other idea. See, basically what this is, it's a reverse of an old idea of selling a listing. In the old days, again, if you go way back to the 50s, and then we kind of, it was still trickling out by the time I was getting in in the early 90s. But here's the idea. <clears throat> you take a listing for $200,000 and you're like, okay, um, who's going to buy this property? Well, it's going to be somebody who is renting or they own a smaller house and they want to move up to it. That's the most likely person. Now, it could be somebody transferring in their other options, but 50% of the people move right back into their own zip code. Okay, so keep that in mind. They like the neighborhood. They like the area. They like the schools. They like the grocery stores and the churches. They like all the community. They, they like this place. So they're gonna stay in the same area. So with that in mind, what you do is you, most people, when they buy up, they buy up 50% more than what they own, okay? So what you'll do is you'll subtract back out uh, that 50%, but you gotta, gotta run the math. It's actually a third off. So the 200,000, you're looking for people who own properties around 130, 140, because for them, that'd be a 50% step up. And what you do then is you reach out to to neighborhoods where there are properties at 130 to 140 thousand, and you say, "Hey, I got this cool property up here. You're thinking of you if you want to if you want to move over there, tell me, and I'll help you sell your home, right? And you're trying to make a match that way with somebody who's going to sell and then buy up to your property, and you can create chains that way. In the old days, we used to have these really long chains. I'm sure they still do it, but. <laughs> This property, buy, a person selling this property to buy that property, to buy this property, to buy that property. You can end up with a chain of 10 people involved uh, and it can get kind of wild. Um, but anyway, that's just another concept of you're looking for a listing with a buyer need, okay? You're kind of reversing it. You had a seller and so you're trying to find the buyer for them. You're trying to look at the other side of the equation. Yeah, be proactive instead of just waiting and and hoping that something comes on the market <laughs> we have created the most amazing efficient system to sell properties called the mls multiple listing service and everybody thinks oh we just snapped our fingers and it came in place no yeah you know, i lived 30 years of it and i wasn't all the way back at the beginning you know with the books and be before the books they had sheets and before they had sheets they just have a meeting where you sat down and wrote pay wrote it out on paper uh, my wife's father was in the business. I've looked at some of his business plans. His business plans did not include co-ops. He, he, he did not think that way. He thought, I take a listing and I sell the listing and I make money. I make the whole commission because I have to go find the buyer. I looked at his business plan. That's what it was. Okay, that was from the 70s. So uh, I'm telling you, this whole thing has evolved to what we have today which is, you know, we talked about the Narcel, and it's one of my frustrations. They don't understand how this thing all came about. It took 50, 60 years for it to come together. But we currently have this amazingly efficient market and we forget that we can go back to those basics also. Those are also an option. Um, all right, I got my high horse. Angela, do we have anything else that we want to chat about? 
No, I think we um, we can wrap it up, Mike. <laughs> awesome. Angela, it was a great call. Thank you so much for being here. And Patty, too. And uh, uh, be sure to join us next week, same time, same place. And I hope you have a fantastic week. Keep moving forward. All right. Bye for now.